grew up, well, when I say grew up surfing, that when I, in my teens, um, when I lived on the Gold Coast, I used to surf probably five yeah. mornings out of seven because um, it was easier, you know, surf was right there. But, yeah, I think even uh, I, I wasn't a good surfer just because I surfed that often. I wasn't a good surfer at all. I was <laughs> pretty crap. Um, but, I, yeah, the idea of I remember one time we had a cyclone on the coast and the aftermath of the cyclone obviously left huge swell and therefore huge waves. And they were coming in at about, oh, I must have been out the back, there was a, a, at uh, Greenmount Beach and it's a, a point break. And you'd have the first lot after the point were coming in at around about six, seven feet. And then just beyond the point on the reef, they were, uh, uh, they were breaking at about 15 feet. And I stupidly went, I'll go out and hit the big ones. I'm paddling out. Fortunately for me, I got stung by a jellyfish, which felt like something like a shark biting me or something weird. Um, and it made me stop. And then I went back in because I think I would have been killed if I'd actually got out there to the 15 foot wave. Yeah, well. It's, it's, it's just that thing because I like I'm a, I'm a strong swimmer. I've spent m most of my life at the beach. I can I love going in the water, mm. but just looking at a 20 meter tall wave, I'm like, there's so much power in the yeah. ocean. And I've had, I've been dumped by a six footer or whatever, and then been sucked down and then panicked, you know, and then you like yeah. you can't breathe and whatever, yeah. and you're pulling yourself up. Uh, and that's and that's just one that's just one wave, and that's why people find it very very hard to understand tsunamis. And they go, well, hang on, it's only six foot high. Why can't? I? But they forget it's the actual it's of six water. foot high ocean moving forward it's not just one wave you know it's literally the ocean moving forward it's six feet higher than it normally and does for all of the, the the uk people out there who do come to australia when borders are open and that kind of thing um <laughs> when they, go, yeah, when they if you go to bondi beach it's not a good beach for people who don't know what it's like to be at a beach um there's plenty of other beaches in sydney if you go north or south coast the northern beaches or southern shire i, I don't it, Gail and I were saying that the, we were saying that the other day as well, and it's really weird. It's like that whole thing about the the, the big debacle over everybody went to Bondo when they were supposed to be in, uh, you know, ex, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? not experiencing. Yeah. I can't think of the word. You know, oh, practicing social, self, distancing. Uh, uh, social distancing, and uh, and you know, there was that debacle at uh, Bondo Beach, and, and the first thing that came into my head was, okay, one wrong because you shouldn't be doing it at this time. You're being told not to, and secondly, it was like. Why would you go to Bondi Beach and be together like sardines? Surf again. Speaking of uh, growing up on on the Gold Coast in Queensland, I used to always marvel as to why everybody flocked to Surface Paradise. Surface Paradise mm. was packed on a, a sunny weekend. It would be absolutely jam packed, and you'd walk two hundred yards away from that, and you'd be on a beach, the same beach. But with hardly anybody around you, yeah. I can never understand. It, it, a hot tip for anyone who goes to Sydney: go to Freshwater Beach. It's yeah. amazing. It's so yeah. beautiful there. At low tide, you can walk oh, out for like two hundred so... meters. It's oh, I love it. Yeah. Um, well, it's like when you even even when you go up to Manly, you go up to the northern beaches, and you've got that long strip. And I know that you know, particularly for people who uh, you know are foreigners and they're a bit unsure and they want to be safe and all of that. It's all about swimming be between the flags and all of that. But as long as you're not going out too far and you you're, you're, you're you know practicing caution and being aware of any sort of rips or anything, well, that, that, I, uh, I think that's you know, if you feel the water's a bit too the time, so then. <laughs> Well, you know, it's 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 a, a rip is incredibly dangerous when you uh, your feet can't touch the the um, the ground, the, the sand, and and even when they can, you know, if you're in the water up to there and you're in a rip, it can be very very dangerous. But if you're only up to your waist and you suddenly feel the water really dragging you out quite strongly, um, you know, when you when you're up to your waist or your knees or something like that, somebody would say, you know what, why go too too far on that one? Because obviously that toe is going to take me. I out. um the first time I ever went oh, yeah. on a stand up paddle board. Um, my, mate, my mate worked at a um, surf store, and so we, me and my other mate, um, he just gave us a board to go use for the day. So we went out, and it was really choppy, and uh, it wasn't great conditions because the waves were just on top of each other. So uh, you couldn't really – because stand-up paddle boards, you mm. kind of want just one long wave, so it's easy to easy to ride. Yeah, um, yeah. And so we got out the back. It took us ages to get out the back. The two of us on this one stand-up paddle board. We paddled around a little bit, and they're like, all right, we should go in. And uh, he was on the front, and then I was lying sort of on the back of him. And then we went in, and then – I just got mm. sucked off the back and then he went in and sort of walked off with the board. And I, I was in this rip, but I was only about five to 10 meters from the shoreline. So I could see it. So I was like, okay, I'm swimming, I'm swimming, swimming, swimming. And yeah. I must've been swimming for about 15 minutes or something. Cause it was, the rip was just so strong that I just couldn't get 
to shore. I got to shore and I just lay there for about 10 minutes because I was yeah. so exhausted because I was like, I'm, I'm too close to shore and that's to the go thing. out and then go around and come back in. So I was like, I'll just keep, I'll get there eventually. I'm close enough and there's enough waves that I should get pushed onto shore, but I just didn't for such a long time. It was very tiring. But for anyone mm. at, at home in the UK, if you do come to Australia and you go to the beach, if you get dumped by a wave, the, the only thing you can do is just not panic because as soon as you panic, you're going to want to breathe and you don't need to breathe. You can hold your breath for at least a minute uh, when you have to. So when yeah. if you get dumped, just relax, let the wave do its thing, and then you'll be able to come back up again. And if you don't panic, then it makes that yeah. much, much easier. Hello, and thank you for watching this Tech Talks clip. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. If you want to see the full conversation, click here. If you want to see all of the Tech Talk clips, click here. And if you want to see all of the Tech Talk conversations, click here.